Hey, everybody, it's Captain Kyle. I'm here with Sharon Van Blarkham, who is the convention chair for Farpoint, which is an awesome sci-fi convention going into its 31st year. However, we want to talk about the fact that its home for the past several years is gone. A, a, uh, a convention hotel that basically hosted a bunch of cons is now no more, and we've had to move. So first of all, Sharon, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. I hope you had a nice holiday season. It was a holiday season. Yeah. <laughs> I will say that. I hope you had one as well. Oh, it was great. It was great. We uh, actually treated ourselves to a trip to Europe on a river cruise, came home with the world's worst souvenir, COVID. Ooh. <laughs> but I am all better now. And we had a we had a great time regardless. We just were a lot cozier at home than going out and visiting our friends. I'm glad to hear that you are feeling better. Thanks. And uh <laughs> now Farpoint's old hotel is not feeling better. It is um, no. I don't know if it's been demolished yet, but it's definitely uh it's in the process from what I've seen. They've got the entire building area fenced off for uh limited access and we did hear that uh, the liquidators are coming in at the end of February to do a liquidation of the physical plant assets. So at this point, they're probably in a bit of a holding pattern and um, probably have a crew in there assembling everything for the sale. And yeah, it was shocking. It was really, really shocking because it was an older hotel, but it had it had such personality and such memories for the entire East Coast fandom community. I mean, people all up and down the East Coast, especially knew when you said, I'm going to a convention in Hunt Valley, they knew that that meant you were going to the Delta Hotel. And with uh, all the horses. <laughs> yep, with all the horses and all the rooms and all the space. And it was it, the it was kind of a relic of an of another time com time commercially uh, because it was built back when big suburban convention hotels were the thing. And then as the years changed and um, conventions activities started centering more in cities or um, for the big convention centers or the big hotels in the cities or in the um, downtown area um, or the suburbs where like the, the regional convention centers are, much right. like um, the one in Altoona where Sci-Fi Valley Con is. Or the one in um, Reston Town Center in Northern Virginia, the or ones Oaks. that hold, yeah, that hold five to eight, that you know, like anywhere from five to eight to ten thousand people. So a convention center, but smaller. And so the sub and the suburban hotels started becoming more uh, wedding and uh, other smaller event, personal event venues. So it was it was a shock, and it was. Oh, it was a kind of a stomach churning experience <laughs> trying to find a venue that had the best space available for the price that we had budgeted because when it we got the word in September and the official closing was in October and we were in February, we were at we were at the pretty much the locked in point. We could not move our date. Right. We avoided it all possible. We had too many contracts already in place. Uh, for suppliers and also for all of our guests. And so we just, you know, we put the word out and Marriott Corporate was very helpful in helping us find a place because they, well, number one, it was in the contract that if they could not fulfill the obligation, they were going to find help us find a place. But they were also just helpful because they wanted to be helpful. We've, we had had such a long, mm -hmm. long, long commercial relationship with them. We were very lucky to find uh, the Double Tree Hotel, which is only about 12 miles away. Had our, it had our dates available, number one, and they were willing to honor a good a good portion of the terms of our contract. Definitely, it was a shock to everyone that the Hunt Valley location was just gone. But this isn't your first move. When I first started going to Farpoint, you were in Timonium. Yes. Yes, indeed. And that's what that's kind of what we joke about. It's like, oh, we've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the the main difference this time, last time it was our choice uh, to, to, to move locations. And this time it was not our choice. And but 
you know, we just, we relied on the experience we had. We knew what we were looking for and what we needed. And thank goodness we made it happen where we, we would love for this to be a semi-permanent home for a couple of years. Of course, that's been one of the big things is the Double Tree has had, they are very well known in the area as a hotel for uh, co- corporate parties and family celebrations like weddings and and bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs and um, and retirement parties and things. And it's a beautiful facility. It's been very, very newly remodeled. And so we were very impressed with that. But them understand, you know, moving their understanding of how this was going to work and our process and our business model. And, and just so it's been, a, we've been cross-educating each other. We've had to learn how Hilton does things because the Double Trees are Hilton hotels and we've been with Marriott for so long. And the uh, Double Tree, this is the first fan type convention they've hosted, be, except for um, they have hosted um, Comic Con, local Comic Cons for and uh, pop culture cons, but usually on, they were daily, just single day cons. And so right. a weekend convention is something that um, they're learning to do. But there are quite a few advantages with the Doubletree location. One of the biggest ones is that their restaurant is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which is uh, very different. A lot of hotels, including the Delta, had had to cancel, or not cancel, but scale down their um, some of their food service offerings. It would become an issue because... People don't want to leave the hotel, especially when it's February and it's cold out. Yeah, yeah. People want to leave to go get food. Why isn't food here? And but the good news is that the Double Tree they do have breakfast, lunch, and dinner offerings, and they are also scaling up for us to offer some grab and go items. And um, they're they're very excited about helping us, and they've been very welcoming. So we're crossing our fingers, and we know everyone's going to like the newly remodeled sleeping rooms and <laughs> some of the other um, amenities that this hotel has. Absolutely. I mean, the Hunt Valley location, a lot of nostalgia there, but the last few years, you know, I always attend our point and shore leave and the things were starting to fall apart a little bit. So I don't think they were putting as much money into the, uh, into the maintenance as they could have. Yeah, they were kind of, they were definitely in a rough spot from what I observed because the, it costs a lot of money to keep up a building like that. And, um, and especially because of the amount of time that had lapsed since it last had a major, major overhaul, everything was so old. They were almost at the gut and redo point. And it's, it's a lot of money to have to put in. And, I su- I suspect someone ran someone with enough power ran the numbers and didn't like the result. Said, yeah, this is this is something that we can probably make more money selling the land once we uh once we get rid of the building. Um but still it's a it's it's just a shame. And from everything I've heard, all of the key staff are still Marriott did a good job of making sure that they placed as many people as possible in. Uh, new positions with the organization and the investment group that actually owned the property was also worked hard to place um, place people in new positions. So that's always good news. You hate to hear you hate to hear about a business closing, and then you really hate to hear that people did not have anywhere else to go. Well, that that is awesome on their part, absolutely. At the old location, though, we had some great great memories. We had some great events. We had karaoke we had the dance party are those events still planned for the double tree yes we um that we we went in saying we had to find um you know make sure we there was space available for everything we wanted to do including especially uh some of our signature events like the karaoke party and the um and the dance party and of course you know masquerade and all of our programming that we're, we're used to. This hotel is um, smaller room wise. We don't have uh, quite as many uh, uh, side panel rooms, but our programming team has done a phenomenal job of organizing things and giving us make, giving us as much space as possible. And we were able to incorporate some new things with this uh, change. Our game room is going to be bigger than it's ever been. 
uh, the room it's going to be in is a thousand square feet. Wow. And so it's a nice big room. Our game room team is really excited. The downside is it's in a second building next door to the current building, to the main building. But the game room was uh, said, we can make such good use of this space. We're willing to, to make this work. And so one of the things that we had to invest in anyway was lots of, lots of new signs for <laughs> uh, directions. And um, we designed um, a nice little uh, pathway markers all the way down to where the new game room is. And the, the advantage is not only a bigger room, it has its own dedicated bathroom and just a lot more space so that anyone who, who does a uh, game and we do have a lot of regulars who come and they want to spend a good chunk of the weekend playing games and enjoying themselves, they'll be able to settle down and enjoy themselves <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, really, really, um, really just have a good relaxing weekend with their friends. And one of the other things we were able to do, uh, we took, they have an extra parlor that uh, suite that was not available at the Delta. And we're taking that and converting it into what we call a meetup space. And we're test, we're piloting the idea. And like last year, we had a very successful space 1999 meetup, just, you know, something very casual and just inviting, you know, letting people know if you're a fan of this group or this organization, or you want to learn more about something, come to this meetup. And so this year we're expanding it. We're doing the Space 1999 meetup again. Uh, the Heinlein Society is hosting a meetup. The um, Outlander, a local group of Outlander fans, is also doing a meetup and a couple of others. And we'll do we'll do some author uh, premiere. Some of the authors have been interested in either doing a book premiere or a reading in this in the room and uh we're we're looking to see you know how well it works we're not going to stuff the room full with programming all weekend so we can see how it goes and work out the kinks and so we're, we're very hopeful for that because that's one of the things we've always liked to do is um let our our people coming our attendees who are paying their hard-earned money to come which we very <laughs> much appreciate but we want them to feel like they have a say and they can give us their ideas and we'll try and implement them. Well, well, that's one good thing that Farpoint has always been. It's been much more of an intimate convention than, you know, some of the larger cons, which I attend because you get to mingle with the guests. You get to, you know, have meetups, you get to meet different clubs. It's much more, you know, much, a much more intimate environment. and. To which I warned a couple of the guests, but <laughs> just be careful. No, no, it's uh, it, it's definitely a different tone than those larger corporate ones. And that meetup room sounds great. Um, vendor space, you said it's smaller. Are, are you still able to accommodate all the vendors you've had or more? We, we have been, actually. That's one of the spaces that we purposely, I you know, identified first to make sure we knew we know the number of vendors we normally have and the number of uh, tables that we allocate to our uh, convention partners and our charity partners and some of our guests. And that was one of the key uh, decision making points. Is there sufficient room for those activities? And we yeah, we were able to find uh, the double tree has uh, it has the if. All four of the ballroom sections are open together. It's the biggest ballroom in Baltimore County. It's the biggest ballroom outside of, of Baltimore City. Wow. So being able to um, use the air walls in different configurations made it very possible to make that all work. Our um, vendor room area is going to have uh, about, about 52 to 55 tables in it which is about the size of what we had at the Delta between the main hallway and, and the room. The advantage here is all of the vendors will now be in a room that gets locked every night. Right, so, right. So, so it gives a lot more security for that. And then the in the adjacent ballroom, and there's a pre-function atrium outside of the, the main ballroom area that we'll be using for other tables for some of our uh, convention partners and some of our guests. And we'll also be able to set up the, um, the uh, celebrity guest signing area there with actually some more comfortable space. So it'll help with better line, better space for more comfortable line management, 
And just size wise in general, you were at the uh, t- at our old hotel in Timonium, and all of the rooms are in a not not a similar configuration, but a similar feel. Everything's on the same floor. Makes it's very comfortable for uh, mobility. It's very comfortable, especially for um, our our attendees who uh, do um, work with their disabilities. So we're it, so everything's on one main floor. The only thing that's not is the parlor for the meetup room, which is on the fifth floor, but you, you take the elevator up, it's right off of the elevator. And of course, we have nice big signs to say, please go right up the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and, also helpful being on one floor for cosplayers, especially the ones mm-hmm. that have large costumes that might impede their vision and yes. you know, not having to worry about going down a shaky escalator or up a shaky escalator. Yeah. You know, and, is nice. <laughs> and the hotel's been very, given us a lot of access to things they um their back backstage hallways if you know which are usually their kitchen and the hallways for staff to move uh, move back and forth are i think they're a little bit bigger than the ones were at the delta and so that will again give easier and and uh and um and more comfortable access for everybody and especially one of the things we did keep in mind specifically is where to put our green room, uh, the staging for them for the masquerade costume contest, because uh, we wanted to ensure we had the comfort of the cosplayers in mind. It sounds like um, it has a lot of good uh, qualities, this new hotel. Mm-hmm. Anything that we used to do that you couldn't accommodate or, or mostly, that might be a little different? Mostly the panel spaces. We were we just we've at uh, the Delta, we were able to stage over three days some years over 200 hours of things to do and that is just not not able to do because the delta had um uh seven or eight individual uh panel rooms between upstairs and downstairs um we were able to make uh carve out uh five five rooms at uh the double tree for panel presentations so we did have to make some cuts in that area which hurt it really hurt because that is some of one of our vital strengths, uh, just having these panels and having them all, you know, just major, amazing, diverse topics throughout the different program tracks. And at the Delta, we were able to have a program track, uh, ded- one dedicated for every single side, every single room. And at the Doubletree, we will have to be combining uh, tracks into a single room, which cuts into the hours available. But we've done, you know, our programming team does done some magic with that. Um, basically, we've expanded Friday programming, and um, and in a couple instances, we may be pushing uh, some programming um, a little bit earlier on Saturday and Sunday, and possibly a little bit later to you know just to accommodate as many people as we can. And this will be a learning curve, but we are going to be able to still have over 100 hours of things to do. We've been lucky to find a new home. We've I've been lucky as a con chair to have so many talented people working for me because I I'll be honest, I was sweating bullets there <laughs> when we were trying to put this together. But uh, my my co-chairs um, who, you know, as well, Farpoint founders, Stephen Renee Wilson, and our, our wonderful programming team led by Cindy Woods and Royal White, they basically said, we got this. Find us a home. We will make it work. And people, I should add, um, some of our attendees have been so wonderfully generous. When they found out, of course, we arranged the uh, Farewell to Hunt Valley event that we had at the very end of October mm-hmm. at the Hunt Valley. And people came and God love them. They donated. Both we shore leave and far point where we each were able to raise a little over a thousand dollars for each of us because um you know shore leave stat was Star Trek Association of Towson was in the same boat. We now had infrastructure and moving costs that we had not budgeted for. Right. And people came and they were generous and that just support just went a long way. It went a long way to boosting our morale. It went a long way to helping us with these extra costs, like buying new signs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surely decided to move out to Lancaster, which I thought was a, an odd move. I do like the fact that you guys did not move far from the original location. That was going to be a problem. We had to keep that option on the table. 
because especially since we were determined to stay on our same day, we were very lucky. And I know shore leave looked at spaces in, you know, all around the area. They were looking in Northern Virginia and in many other places. I've never seen the the venue in Lancaster they're moving to, but I have heard, you know, that it is, it is very large. And so I know they will enjoy the challenge of making use of all that space because they will, should be able to, you know, provide a nice, big, exciting um, weekend once they get their, wrap their head, heads around, this is what our space is now. And they'll be in the same boat we are right now, redesigning all the layouts. I mean, we were, again, another way we were spoiled, our uh, Marriott gave us access to uh, the Social Tables app, which is an event planning app where the venue can load in all the specs for their rooms, all the specs for the tables of tables and chairs inventory they have. And then they basically said, here you go, design your layout and kick it back to us. And so our layouts had been pretty much in that app for the last five years. And all mm -hmm. we had to do every year was tweak it. And um, Hilton does not have something similar. Yeah, our friends at Shore Leave will be going through the same, the same. Mm, um, Only they'll have the luxury of having more time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in some ways, it's 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 a luxury. In some ways, I think it's more chance to get worried about things. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of opportunities for both of us because change is always good. I mean, you hate sometimes you hate to see it come, especially when it comes hard and fast. And but you know. Change gives you the opportunity to, to look at things. This is what we've been doing. We have to change it. Let's change it for the better. And let's make it better. Um, let's do our darndest to still keep our, our mission and our spirit in focus because we were the other thing we were determined to do is continue to keep the focus on the mission of our nonprofit, which sponsors the convention, which is to support creators in the fields of science fiction, comics, anime, fantasy, and horror, and just any kind of those imaginative realms, which is one of the reasons that we were very specific that we needed not only the space for our vendors, but that our um, our charity and non nonprofit and convention partners are those people that are doing, those, are also pursuing those missions. So we had to make sure that Artway Alliance had sufficient room for their displays and um so and some of our other guests that are also creators in these fields we wanted to make sure that we had the space for them to do their uh the displays that uh we were that we've always offered them and you know and again the programming space for um some of our creators to do their their programs as well and and so that we kept that focus in mind when we were, especially the programming team, when we were having to look at which activities are happening when and where. Very glad you could make this work. Um, I don't miss our point um, since I started. Go I don't even remember when I started going, but it, it was. It's been a while. It's been uh, close yeah, to 10 would, years, if not 10 I years. Say you, no, I think it's been more than that because it's been uh, almost 10 years since we left. The Crown Plaza, and I remember meeting specifically meeting you at uh, at at the Crown Plaza in Timonium. All all of the conventions that were at the at the Hunt Valley location were dealt a blow, but y'all came back swinging. Um, and I, I'm glad that you were able to, you know, shift. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the new place is like. I'm sure there's going to be bumps. There's bound to be bumps, but. Uh, our point is one of those cons where when bumps come, you just rally the troops and, you know, it gets taken goal. care of. <laughs> it's our goal because um, we recognize and appreciate that people come and they give us their hard earned money to um, to come after, with all the other things that people can do with uh, their discretionary income and uh, the things they're interested in as their hobbies and um, and their interests, they could go to the movies, they could go to a play, especially in the Washington, Baltimore area. There are so many tough options for their leisure time and people to come and choose to spend their time with us. And we recognize that and appreciate it. That's very important to us. And we 
and it's it's a trust. You know, they trust us to give them good value for their money. And we we recognize that and we always we we appreciate that. We try and keep that first and foremost in their mind. And and um and then and, and people like you, I mean our press partners, you and May come every year and you talk about us at other events and um and our other press partners have been doing that too. And we very much appreciate the support during this transition because you got to get the word out. I would hate to have people show up on February 8th in uh, in Hunt Valley and say, where is everybody? Hopefully they'll uh, <laughs> they'll have paid attention to uh, all the announcements. But uh, you never know. You never know. But yeah, we definitely want to see everybody in Pikesville. And I'm looking very much forward to it. And you have some great guests, Tony Newsom from Lower Decks and Space Force, Jay Lee from the Orville. Aaron McDonald, who is the scientific advisor for Star Trek, all of Star Trek, the the entire franchise now, getting that job. Wow. And of course, Cal Dodd from X-Men, the animated series, which is one of these days we're going to see the the new seasons on Disney. Yeah, the latest rumor I heard was January. So actually, this is January. So yes, obviously, I'm behind on the rumors. (laughs) That that's the rumor I heard, but ho- hopefully very soon. Maybe it'll be that weekend, and everyone will spend time. Oh, in wouldn't the that be wild? It. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, uh, was... some some great guests again for those watching. February 9th through the eleventh in Pikesville, Maryland. Don't don't forget that part. Um, the Hunt Valley location is no longer the host, um, but we are looking forward to the Double Tree and Hilton and having them. Um, adjust to the craziness that is the fandom, but but we're a nice craziness. <laughs> yes. I, 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 we think they're up for it. This is the first year. There's probably going to be some adjustments next year, but you know, always onward and upward, always and, learning, uh, <laughs> always improving. Yep, absolutely. So, thank you, Sharon, for spending the time. Oh, you're welcome. It, and, Thanks for having me. Yeah, I just, I, I think you probably put a lot of, uh, people's fears to rest about oh it's a new location are we going to be able to do everything and you know you've the far point team i think is has come through and uh but but of course the true test will be on february 9th through the 11th and i hope lots of you are there um to take part and make this um a very successful transition and so thank you sharon and thanks everyone for watching um, hope to see you at Farpoint, but uh, as always, have fun and follow your fandom. So, what are we going to do tonight, Brain? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Watch fandom spotlight videos and then take over the world. Hey, God, that's great. And maybe we should tell them all to have fun? And follow their fandom. Then bow before my genius.